Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Hello, I'm Jeff Kellum. Welcome to this edition of Encounter. I'm standing here on a very busy East Main Street, 202 East Main Street in the heart of the Union District of Endicott. I grew up just a few hundred yards from here. And when I was a kid, this house was the manse of the Union Presbyterian Church. The pastor lived here. But for the past several years, this house has been the home of the Samaritan Counseling Center. Sometimes life hands us some options that we'd rather not choose from some problems we have a hard time dealing with, situations where even our very best friend or a close relative really can't give us competent or, or helpful advice. And so we turn to counselors. So we're going to meet the executive director of the Samaritan Counseling Center, Marion Towers, and a member of the board, Matt White. We'll be talking about what the Samaritan Center has to offer, and we'll also talk about their move from this old house to their new headquarters just up the road in Endwell. Matt White is on the board of the Samaritan Center, and Marion Towers is uh, the executive director of the Samaritan Center. Yes. And you've been the executive director for nine years. Uh, probably it'd be a good idea to talk about what the Samaritan Center is. Uh, I know that it offers, uh, what was the phrase that I liked here? Uh, a spiritually sensitive approach to counseling. Yes. What does that mean? Well, we try to help people deal with their problems in life using a spiritually sensitive approach, a holistic approach that involves not just the physical side of the person, the emotional well-being, the, the mental capacity, um, but the spiritual life and the community as well. How does that person fit into their social surroundings? What social supports do they have? So it's a holistic approach bringing all those features together. Sure. Uh, it, many people have very difficult choices to make. Uh, life deals them some, some options they didn't know they were going to have to choose from. Um, you read the advice columnists and they say, oh, get counseling, or you should go get counseling. Um, and I know that some folks are reluctant to do that. What is the stigma attached to asking for help? I'm not sure where it all comes from, but you know, there really is, it takes a strong person to ask for help. So really the reverse is true. A strong person. Does ask. Does ask, yeah. yes, yeah. exactly. So how can we help people be strong enough to ask? Just make that first step, make that first call, pick yeah. up the phone. Yeah. The Samaritan Center does not operate uh, as an independent agency here in Endicott. It's part of a network, isn't it, around the country? Yes, we belong to a network of centers across the world, global network. We're accredited by the Samaritan Institute out of Denver, Colorado. And um, where did it begin? Uh, how did it start, do you know? Where the background is. Of the Institute? Yeah. Not, yeah. not really, but um, our center began right here at, in the basement of Union Presbyterian Church in Endicott here. Uh, the Reverend Doug Beatty was the founding director, and that was back in 1983. So we've been in existence 33 years. And you've been housed at the, uh, the old manse. Um, I just grew up a few hundred yards from here, and I remember this was the pastor's home. Uh, so you've been in that manse for some time, and now it's time to make a move. And I want to talk about that move. Maybe, Matt, you could describe what's behind this move. What well, uh, because of the growth of the center uh, through marketing and uh, some various other efforts, uh, we just have outgrown the space that we have. So we needed more room for more counselors to help more people. So uh, Marion was fortunate enough to find uh, a building that... Uh, we could afford, uh, <laughs> that offered more space than our current location. Sure. Uh, and then she worked hard to write a number of grants, which uh, most of them got approved. So now we have that office and it's uh, being touched up, you know, you know, fresh coat of paint and everything. So we'll be moving in uh, soon. Well, the, I heard that you'd be leaving around the end of the month, end of August. End of yeah. August, yeah. that's correct. Let's go back to some of the services offered by the Samaritan Center. Um, 
What are the kinds of things that people come looking for? The most common needs seem to be anxiety and depression, but also people come because they're suffering from grief or loss, uh, marital or relationship stressors, uh, family issues, teens is a big one, yeah. and, um, sometimes children with different kinds of behaviors or un, you know, problems in school, things like that. And so you're not working with only the parent or the adult, but you're also working with the youth and, and the children? Yes, children, teenagers, adults, yeah. all ages, yeah. couples, families. People have heard about you because perhaps they've seen your brochure, maybe they've seen the TV spot, uh, or their local church has referred them. So then what? They, they come in your front door and uh, tell me about the process there. Well, we take some basic information. Of course, uh, today with the um, various insurances, we do take a number of different types of insurance, a lot of the uh, managed care programs. Uh, em employee assistance programs, and of course, just paying out of pocket. Right. And, but we really try to work with people to help them um, to make our services affordable for them. Right. But I'm also looking at, at how you decide what counselor talks to what person. What is the process there? Uh, well, it, it, there's a number of factors I mean, you involved. It depends. Present on them with a hat, and they pull. Out yeah, them. <laughs> yeah, multiple <laughs> choice. Yeah. Uh, it, in general, it can be by the insurance because not all counselors are on all panels. So that, that's a big factor. We want to be able to make the most of that person's uh, benefits with their ins insurance plans. Um, maybe it has to do with uh, if someone needs special, uh, train, uh, special treatment with EMDR, it's uh, eye movement desensi desensitization and reprocessing. I can barely say it. But, um, that's a special, uh, training that is for people who suffer from trauma, can, could be from uh, uh, PTSD from the war, or it could be from a traumatic experience during childhood. Sure. Um, so we have a couple of counselors who are trained spe spe specifically with that. Um, so if that's indicated, then that's who they would get one of those counselors. Sure. It might be just simply by who's available at what time of evening or yeah, daytime. Yeah. And that's important to talk a little bit about the hours that you, you can come at someone's convenience pretty much. Yes. Because folks might yes. work and be only available during that evening. Well, with nine counselors, there's a pretty good chance we'll find one uh, for you. Good, good. The um, idea of, uh, of seeing a counselor for folks the first time, um, I know that people these days are, they want everything to be fixed now. Um, Know, instant gratification, uh, a sense that, you know, I'm willing to put so much time into this, but not very much more. I want, to, I want, I want some answers now. What does it take to be patient, to work through some of the issues that folks might bring to the Samaritan Center? It's a good question. I'm not a counselor. I don't have a counseling background, um, but our, our counselors are trained for that process. Right. Um, they, they are very patient. They're, they're non-judgmental. They're con just genuinely concerned about helping people with ways to get through whatever it is they're dealing with in their life. Yeah, yeah. And so you, one should not expect that you're going to make an appointment and then um, go home and everything will be fine. You'll have to... I can tell you a story about this, this one little girl that um, one of the counselors told me about. She was about three years old and she was having a very difficult time. She did not want to go and visit with her dad. It was Daddy's weekend. Yeah. She did not want to go. She was um, hysterical with tears, just really frightened. And after about, I don't know, five or ten minutes with one of our counselors and this little bit of EMDR, she was smiling and happy and just, okay, I'm going to go see my daddy yeah. now. Yeah, wonderful. So five or ten minutes versus a lifetime of therapy. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not magic, but right, right. it seems like it when it happens. Yeah. But, but empathy is a, often a, a tool that a counselor can use and, and, yes, and listening sure. carefully and helping someone understand um, some of the, the choices and options and the consequences of, of those options as well. Uh, Matt, what brought you to the board at the Samaritan Center? Well, I was looking for something to uh, contribute to the community. I was looking for, you know, 
things to be more meaningful with my time. Yeah. Uh, and the opportunity came up and I said, you know, these people help a whole mountain of people throughout our county and 12 other counties. So it just seemed like a good fit. Yeah. And I guess you've mentioned now that this is more widespread than simply the Union District of Endicott. You have other offices. Tell me about those. We currently have an office out in Windsor, satellite office part-time. So we're able to help people from that surrounding area deposit and Harpersville. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to this building issue. And I think we can be frank about the fact that uh, the building has some shortcomings that you're going to solve by moving to a new, a new facility, uh, one of which is accessibility. Yes. Yeah. 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 So the new building will be accessible. Yes. And offer space for uh, all the counselors who are on staff. And the new building is has been renovated for your use? They're working on it. Okay. <laughs> what does it take to, to get the building like this ready for a... a is it well, we had, uh, uh, you know, you talked about accessibility. There's the wheelchair ramp in the back of the building, but some of the doorways had to be widened to meet code. Sure. Uh, we have a, you know, reception area being installed because they didn't really have that previously. We had some walls taken down, uh, new carpeting, a fresh coat of paint. Uh, there's some, uh, you know, structural issues, some boards that have to be replaced. Right, right. So as that becomes available, up at the, the move itself, um, uh, all, we're talking all new furniture, are we, or moving what you have now? Some, a little bit of both. Yeah, you'll be have a fresh, some new, a fresh some start, old. a new beginning, which is kind of what people look for when they come into counseling, I think, uh, a sense that they could be getting in in, in some way. Mm -hmm. I have the brochure, and I was looking at, at uh, some of the things that, that you can help with. You've, you've already mentioned depression, anxiety, but also working with addictions. Um, that's, uh, in, in this day and age, uh, this is a, an important topic that we've dealt with before on Encounter, um, but we're talking about all kinds of addictions, I guess. Yes, uh, not only substance abuse, but eating disorders as yeah, well. Right. And then, so, um, you've mentioned parenting uh, and marital issues, and then life changes and career changes. Um, examples. Oh. Retirement can be a, a pretty big stressor. Yeah. If you're not really quite ready for it, or you don't know what you're gonna do next. Right. Now, education and training, that's another uh, part of what the Samaritan Counseling Center does. Describe some of the, the uh, events that, or, or the training that you um, Our counselors, it, some of them enjoy going out to speak to different groups, uh, presenting um, on topics, various sub, uh, mental health topics, like uh, Jan had gone and talked to the uh, funeral directors at one point and, and shared with them how she works with people who are grieving uh, to give them a sense of that and help them, uh, from their perspective, work yeah. with those families. Yeah. So. so these are uh, offered gratis to churches and community groups? We can work out an arrangement. Uh, we do have a community education fund that people can donate to, designate funds for that, and that's what we can compensate our counselors right. from if it's needed. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the idea of illuminating minds and impacting lives, uh, that kind of combines your training uh, opportunities with the, the personal counseling. Um, and the, the logo has a dove on it, which speaks to me of peace. Is mm -hmm. that what counseling can offer? Peace of mind. Yes. Yeah. I, I think of it as um, if you're in a, in a spot where things are very dark or confusing, then talking through it can just shed some light on that or some insight. Yeah. So that's that piece of illuminating your minds. And, and then what can you do with that? Right. How does that impact your life? Yeah. And when um, folks are coming, um, we kind of started with how much it costs because that's a limiting factor to some people and say well I'd like counseling and simply can't afford it but as you mentioned insurance uh, coverage often mm -hmm. takes care of it and then there are other are there, are there uh, pardon the expression of scholarships or, or financial aid um, for those who don't have insurance we do have a discounted fee and we also have a good Samaritan fund that donors can contribute to and uh, one uh, 
somebody completes their therapy and they've had to leave it because of some hardship condition and perhaps have left a balance on their account, yeah. we can take money from that fund to help right. pay off that right. account. And uh, Matt, I know that this is not necessarily what you're on the board to do, but uh, is this a self-sustaining program or are you constantly doing fundraising? And uh, Well, like all, all nonprofits, we're constantly fundraising. Uh, we have our event coming up in November. Uh, it's just the way nonprofits work. Yeah. You're, you're always fundraising. Yeah. And tell me, now, I've been to a couple of the events, but describe this, this annual fundraiser. I, I don't, you may not have your, your plan set for now, but what? Well, what so have you done? this year we're, we're uh, trying a new style event called the Sweet Taste of Europe, where we've picked six countries from Europe. And when you come into the facility, there'll be six locations decorated like those countries. And uh, you'll get a sample of a beverage from that country and a dessert or other snack item. And we'll have a little passport carrying with you on the lanyard. Yeah. And when, once you've gone to that country, you get your passport stamped. <laughs> and we'll, we're going to make miniatures of like the Big Ben or the Eiffel Tower so you can get a photo op with, you know, an eight foot tall statue of Big Ben. Right, right. And where will this be? At Our Lady of Good Council. Oh, okay. All right. And that's where they've been in the past for, um, it was, was it a dinner? Yes. And, and a yes. speaker. Mm -hmm. We've had dinners. Because I saw mm -hmm. Ask Amy there. Uh, and I thought, isn't that interesting that she, of course, being the columnist and having some local roots in Dryden, um, um, she's at Our Lady of Good Counsel. Going back to the, uh, the Samaritan Center's um, place in the community, um, one of the things that makes for a healthy community is good mental health mm -hmm. and good spiritual health. And so, uh, this is not Christian counseling, uh, as some folks might know it, uh, where the Bible is open and you're doing a lot of praying, but it is, it is spiritually based. Can you t talk a little bit about that? We try to work with, well, our counselors try to work with uh, clients through their own faith. If they, if they are a person of faith, we'll work with them from wherever they, they are at at that perspective. Yeah. If they are not a person of faith, that's no problem either. We make no judgments, and we're not going to push faith on right. them, of course, you know, we're, but we're going to work with them where they're at. It's, it's being uh, uh, just aware that a person's spirituality